sports systems in geology can be complex and understanding them and their complexity is important for characterising the Earth's subsurface. In that regard, seismic imaging is the best tool we have for looking below ground. And people view faults in different ways. Do they form linked networks like this? Or are they dispersed arrays like this? It matters because these faults can impact on forecasting how the Earth behaves, what its structure is, and how it may impact on engineering projects in that subsurface world. So one way of exploring these uncertainties is to be informed by outcrop examples, faults that we find in cliffs like these. Faults that might look simple, but which hold greater complexity as we zoom in. With different patterns shown by different outcrops. So outcrops give an insight of the complexities of the real world. So let's explore some natural examples together. I've come to one of my favourite parts of the world to grapple with structural geology, northwest Scotland. But this time, I'm not hiking into the hills, but looking somewhere much more convenient. I've spent the last few weeks working inside on seismic interpretations and after some further inspiration. These boulders protecting the seafront of Ullapool from storms were quarried from a mass of limestones and dollar stones of a succession called the Durness Group, old sedimentary rocks that were caught up in a tectonic episode some 420 million years ago. So if we want to understand rock deformation and faulting, it's always worth consulting the real rocks. We can build up an interpretation of these structures together. Running up and down the image are lots of fractures and we can identify bedding, the primary layering, which is locally offset, faulted by some of these vertical fractures. But there's another type of fault here the layering here is offset, and as we trace the layers along, we find little folds and more offsets. So let's interpret these other faults. They're thrusts that push the green layer over itself. This thrust seems fairly simple and cuts across the layers but others are more complex. This thrust is segmented. And as we follow up through the layers, we see more segmentation, a behavior that's called soft linked. So even in the same rocks over very short distances, thrust zones can have different geometries, some hard linked, some soft linked. But what about the relationships between these inclined thrusts and the steep faults and fractures? The faults are cut and locally offset by the steep faults, so the steep faults are younger than the thrusts. So some nice overprinting relationships that we can work out between these steep faults and the inclined structures coming through here. So let's look at another part of the structure. The steep fractures and little faults, they form a zone across which the stratigraphic layering is dropped down, down thrown on the left hand side. But this isn't just a single fault plane, it's a zone of faulting. So if we fade out the rocks, we can see how the faulting is represented by the offsets of the layering. And perhaps this kind of faulting corridor, not a discrete surface, but a tract of multiple strands, can inform interpretations of seismic imagery like this. So 
So natural rocks like this allow us to reconstruct faulting histories and understand the complexity of real world fault zones. Faults preserved in these boulders and perhaps in many outcrops are rarely simple planes, but make complex patterns of multiple strands. Let's check out another of these wonderful boulders. And add the stratigraphic layering. Lots of steep fractures again, which represent distributed faulting. And again, some thrusts that are contractional with respect to the layering. And this time, the thrusts cut the steep faults and fractures. We can fade out the rocks to just show the layering and faults. The thrust is narrow, discrete, but terminates downwards and passes into a fold pair along with soft link thrusts. So this is another great boulder for showing the complexity of natural fault systems. Drawing together the lessons from the rocks, the watchword is variability. So in this second example, the thrust cut the steep faults, but the opposite was found in the first example. So different histories are the relative timing of the different types of faults. And the thrusts themselves also show variability in places passing back into faults and the patterns of fault localization can vary from thrust to thrust, even in the same rocks. All this means we should be humble and rather circumspect when interpreting the subsurface and value alternative views on the structure. Consulting real rocks is really grounding and can open our eyes to the possible. It's always worth exploring the diversity of structures found in outcrops. And of course you can find outcrops in many unlikely places.